Hello and welcome back, my name is Will and in today's video we are going to finish up the creepy wooden shack build I started last time. Painting rotten wood and decorating is the focus of this video, but just before we get onto that, think about hitting the like and subscribe buttons, it really helps out the channel. Right, let's get going. The final thing we did in the last video was we sealed the model with Mod Podge. This stops the wood soaking up all the moisture from any paint that we put on. For the first coat of paint we are going to use cheap black craft paint. Nothing fancy for this step, I just used a piece of paper as a palette and mixed in a bit of water from the brush to help it flow a bit better on the model. I tested how the black paint would look on the roof as I knew this bit was going to be covered up. It came out fine so I carried on with the rest of the model. I painted the wall panels the same way on both sides. I then came back for a second coat of black paint to reduce the patchy look. I still watered this coat down as well to avoid clogging up all the wood grain details that we've done. Next I painted the wood with a sandy yellow colour. I used an old model paint that was past its best for this but I really don't recommend using any model paints for terrain making, they're just too expensive. Get some cheap craft paint for terrain making. I heavily watered down the yellow so that I would get more mileage out of a small pot of paint but also so that it soaked into the wood grain better. I wasn't too worried about being neat with this as I knew I was going to give it a wash soon anyway. Next I dirted down the window grill using some Typhus Corrosion paint from Games Workshop. Not only is this an excellent base colour for painting rusty effects but it also has a little texture in it as well and it was only a small area so I could justify using a model paint. Next I was going to wash down all the wood to give it the ancient rotten wood look I wanted. I had a few options to try including artist inks, some brown contrast paint and a really old tin of army paint a quick shade. The quick shade went on nicely and I was pretty happy with the colour as well as I thought of not having to waste any ink or paint but I decided to test the others anyway. The contrast paint ended up being too rich a brown and way too wasteful of model paint as I expected and the artist inks were really messy and at the time I thought way too dark. After letting them dry the contrast paint looked way better but it was just too wasteful for paint. The inks dried a little lighter than they looked when they were wet which was excellent and the quick shade whilst being a nice dark brown it ended up being really glossy. I decided to go with the inks. I used a couple of drops of black and brown ink on each piece and then used the brush to mix them together on the piece of wood itself. I tried painting over the glossy test piece as well with ink but the colour just ran. I started again with the glossy piece by painting it with black craft paint and then the yellow and then the inks to bring it up to speed with the other pieces. I won't be using that quick shade again that's for sure. Next up I gave all the wood a dry brush with a light brown tan colour. I'm using model paints again but you can use any light wood type colour for this, even the same yellow as used before if you have nothing else. The technique is simple, get a little paint on your brush and then brush most of it off on a piece of paper and then lightly drag the brush across the wood grain. This causes all the raised edges and sharp angles to catch a bit of paint and look highlighted. This gives the piece a more natural look. Moving on to the roof, I took the rectangles of corrugated paper I'd cut and stuck each one in a clip and sprayed them with a rust texture spray. This not only gave them a bit of texture for that more weathered look, it was a perfect base colour as well. I also sprayed three of them black as I'd intended the panels to be a little mismatched rather than all being the same uniform colour. For the black panels, I watered down some silver paint and applied it all over. The reason for this is silver is a great base coat for the Typhus Corrosion paint I used earlier in the video, and that's what colour these panels were going to end up being. As for the orange rusty panels, I grabbed a piece of sponge, roughed up the edges a little bit, dipped it in the same silver paint, dabbed most of the paint off on a piece of paper, and lightly stippled it on the raised contours of the corrugated paper. This had the effect of looking like the highest points were the most warm. Back to the silver panels. Once they had dried I painted them all over with Typhus Corrosion. This gave them a nice grimy look as well as added a bit of texture.
Back to the orange panel. I washed a few of them down with a brown wash. Again, I used model wash for this, but ideally I would have made my own wash so as not to waste expensive model paint. I'll try making some in a future video. I washed the remaining three orange panels in a black wash for a little bit of variation. While those were drying, I dry brushed the darker corrosion panels with Games Workshop's Riser Rust dry brush paint. This colour is made specifically to pair with Typhus Corrosion. I used the same technique as I did with the wood dry brush, brushing off most of the paint and then lightly dragging the bristles across the contour. I also dry brushed a little orange onto the window grill for the same rusty effect. Swapping back to the main model, I decorated it all over with random dried moss which I stuck on using PVA glue to look as if it were growing up the walls like ivy. As soon as the moss glue had dried, I hot glued the wall panels onto the wooden frame. It's really starting to come together now, I think. Next, I hot glued the roof panels on. I overlapped them starting at the bottom and randomly placed the three types, the brown wash, the black wash and the corroded one, so as to make it look a little more ramshackle. Now I decided I wanted to add a little more detail. I 3D printed a couple of wooden barrels as well as some candles and other bits. I thought some lit candles might give a spooky, ooh, somebody must be nearby vibe to the model. I picked out a few of the pieces I liked best. I stuck one of the barrels and three of the candles onto cocktail sticks and gave them a base coat of grey with the airbrush. I painted the barrel in a suitable dark brown wood colour. I did two thin coats so as not to obscure the wood effects on the print. Next I gave the wooden barrel an all over black wash to make it look more weathered. After the wash had dried, I painted the metal bands in copper and gave those a black wash as well. To finish up the barrel, I gave it a dry brush in the same tan brown colour I used to dry brush the walls. Then I moved on to the candles. I painted these in a creamy bone colour and then washed them with a gloss brown wash. I decided where I wanted the barrel to sit and hot glued it in place. I then super glued the candles on top of the barrel. It was then I felt the building needed a bit more foliage on it in some of the corners, so I used some grass tufts that looked like moss. The tufts were adhesive themselves, but I added some PVA glue to stick these on and use them to hide a couple of imperfections. To add a little more life to the piece, I decided to try some object source lighting from the candles in the corner. This was just a quick dry brush and definitely not my best look. The method was easy enough though. I gently dry brushed a wide area in red, a slightly smaller area in orange, and a small area closer to the candles in yellow. Then I painted the candle flames in the same yellow I'd used for the dry brush. This is where I should have stopped. I did some more dry brushing on the candles themselves, but I think I went a bit overboard to be honest. And I got some colour on the side of the barrels where there would be no light, so I neatened this up off camera. And the last thing I added to fill the empty space and draw the eye was a pool of blood in the middle of the floor with some bloody footsteps leading away.
And there we have it, all finished up. Definitely not my best work, but I really enjoyed making something random with materials I've not really used before. It was a fun experience and I'm sure I'll find some use for it in games. I hope you found the journey enjoyable. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you did, and as always, there are some affiliate links in the description below to some of the stuff I used in this video. Using them really helps out the channel at no extra cost to yourselves. Consider checking them out. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.